Hello guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode. Now, I know I said in the last video that we would be doing some interplanetary missions in this episode, but you may remember I was just a little bit short of the science that we needed for this tech here to get us ladders so we could actually get a Kerbal down to the surface of a planet and back into the ship. And I was going to do some boosting to get some science off screen, just send up some probes, some places, get some science and transmit it back. But somebody suggested in the comments se section of the last video that I could go to the North Pole here on Kerbin and take some samples there to get that little bit of extra science. And I thought, you know what, that is a really good idea because that could be quite interesting. I've never gone to the North Pole before. I'm sure it'll just be a white snowy biome like any other, but it's still quite a cool thing to say you've done. We can stick a flag up there. And I thought, you know what, that would be quite interesting. So I loaded up a new crafting engineering VAB section to build ourselves a lander to go over there. And I think there's been another update since I last played, because I am sure that those inline reaction wheels didn't used to look that colour. So I play around with building us a section that will be our lander, it's got on all our science matriggies. I decide that I'll mount on some radio engines, uh, radio fuel tanks as opposed to just one column stack so that we can have the whole thing be shorter, less likely to topple on landing. So I thought that was a good idea considering we will be using one of these short engines because we're going to have more than enough fuel to get up to the North Pole. We won't even need to make it into a complete orbit. So the chances are I'm going to be dropping quite a lot of fuel back down into Kerbin. So there's no need to really design this to the most optimum way that we can. So I've designed on here a little section that will be our lander and I decide I'm going to put on some batteries and solar panels because I don't want to go all the way to the North Pole just to find out that we have lost our um, ability to control this thing because that would be a disaster. So I'm going to stick those on now. I think I'm just going to mount them up the side really because again we don't really need to be that optimum and we can just tip the thing over if we need to get him out in a minute because we are safe enough that we can just recover the vessel even if it's break off. Obviously we're going to need the ladders for future missions because we won't be able to do that. But we can worry about that when it comes to it. So I start to build the, land the launch stage now that we have our lander finished. And normally I would use the same stage that I've been using for all the missions. But again, here we are going to need nowhere near as much fuel as we normally do. Normally this fin would be able to make it to the moon and back, and we really don't need that. So I decide to mount just three fuel tanks as opposed to six on the side here, mounting those up. And again, I'm not going to worry about having the most efficient way of decoupling them. I'm only going to put two double tanks on here as opposed to three. And you'll see in a minute, this is again going to be far too much fuel, even with all these cutbacks that I'm doing just to try and speed up the mission. So I get the best solid boosters, and I believe I mount those radially onto those extra three. Yes, I do. You can see me doing it up here. And it's not quite straight, but I hope I'm going to go back and fix that in a moment, as well as moving it down. And when I actually take a look at it in a minute, I realise I didn't even put those solid boosters onto the decouplers straight. But I will come and fix that later on. Right now, I'm going to run around with all the struts and strut everything together. Because struts are really your best friend in this game. They make your ships so, so much more sturdy. And normally if I launched this fin, it would be wobbling and things would be flying off everywhere. It would be a disaster, guys, but thanks to the improvement of struts, we don't have to worry about any of that. We can just send it off and it'll all hold together, which is fantastic. One of the best techs you can get if you are starting off a career mode let's play in this game. So I want to hear your guys' opinions in the comments section, 
because next video we'll have all the tech required to head to a planet and I want you guys to let me know do you want me to head in one planet to Eve which is a purple planet I believe it's smaller but more dense than Kerbin is or do you want us to head out a planet to Juna which is a red planet very similar to Mars sort of idea so you guys let me know what you think and we can get ourselves out to one of those planets in the next episode. You can see now I'm just playing around with the stage in here to make sure everything goes off at the right time. You don't know how many missions I've done where I forgot to play around with the stage in, got onto the launch pad and then just crazy shit has happened and I don't even know guys, it's very very bad and by fixing those um, solid boosters now I kind of mess up the struts but it's good enough for a short mission like ours we don't need it to be optimal as I was saying earlier so after I think I now have everything sorted I'm just gonna name it we're gonna call it the Polo Express since that is where we are going for this mission I'm really excited to get to the North Pole guys we're gonna plant a flag it's gonna be all heroic and shit it's gonna be brilliant so now we get ourselves out onto the launch stage onto the launch pad I should say so I'm going to speed up the video here to two or three times. I can't remember which. I think I might have actually gone somewhere in the middle, 250% or so. And without further ado, I time warp in today so I can actually see what I'm doing. And I launch. Now I put the throttle on around two thirds. So that the solid boosters are getting the most efficiency. And we're not going to boost really fast and then get slowed down by drive once we drop them. So I'm going around two thirds throttle boosting up nice and easy. I decided to go for some crazy cinematic viewpoint here as we watch those solid boosters fly past us and then up to full throttle and you can see we didn't actually drop too much speed in that process which means it was very efficient which is what we want. And we're going to be heading off instead of doing a gravity turn to the east this time we'll be doing one to the north of course. I have to remember that I don't want to go off in some crazy direction. I think I am actually tilted slightly over to the north as it is just to get me sort of heading in that direction. So we're getting up now into the higher area of the atmosphere as we can see from that atmosphere gauge. So I'm turning over to I believe around 20 degrees from vertical because again the way this ship's built with its engines and fuel it's not very weight efficient, it's very heavy, so we get a much greater effect from the gravity component of the weight and it's going to pull us down a lot more and change the angle of our velocity vector a lot more than it would on a fully optimised ship. So I don't turn over as great as I normally would. We can see me now, I'm starting to get very high up, we're almost out of the atmosphere completely, we're at 55,000 metres. I believe 70,000 is where the atmosphere ends, so our apoapsis is definitely out of there. You can see I'm time warping up to it now, so we've got the advantage of no friction. I don't know, yes we will, we are definitely over 70, we're 83 there. And now I'm going to burn horizontally, just to expand our trajectory up into the North Pole. You can see it there, sticking up over the top of Kerbin. And as you can see, we have far more fuel than we're ever going to need. We could probably use this launch stage to slow down to a stop still and still have leftover fuel. It is definitely, definitely a lot more than we needed. But so is the way of things when I have all this good technology but we're just doing missions inside of Kerbin. And that's why we're going to be expanding out into the other planets of the solar system soon. But anyway, we get our trajectory out over the North Pole now I'm aware that when I slow down the ship that trajectory is going to shrink so I overshoot the edge of the North Pole by quite a margin so that I can do so safely without missing the North Pole and landing in the sea and making this whole mission a waste. So coming in hot now we start to re-enter the atmosphere and getting that burning up friction effect as we hit the air. So I'm going to burn retrograde to slow ourselves down because we were doing around 2,000 meters per second when we entered. And obviously we want to be hitting around 200 meters per second on the slow part of our descent before we open the parachute. So we're coming down now and I'm starting to think about dropping, there we go, that launch stage. 
just because we have more fuel than we need so we may as well get rid of it and start burning on this smaller ship that we're gonna land with so i deploy the lander legs so we're hitting around 200 meters per second so i activate the first stage of the power shoots and just slow the throttle down to keep us at just below 100 meters per second as we're going down so that we don't put too much strain on these power shoots because they can break off if you're going too fast while they are out so i just ferry the fin down nice and slowly we're at 2000 meters above sea level at around 500 meters the parachute should open fully so i'm just carefully controlling our speed it's down to almost 50 meters per second now nice and slow and there they go they open up nice and easy and i can just drift it down now we're going at a very comfortable 6.1 meters per second there so i burn slightly to slow us down a bit but we land without any problems and we are here guys, we are on the North Pole of Kirvin, and it looks fantastic. I love the bright effect, you can see the atmosphere, the curvature and the change in the diffusion of the air because it's just so flat up here. I love it, it looks fantastic. So we're doing some science here, we're doing the mystery goo there, we've done a crew report, we're going to do our materials bay now. And it's not great, the science, but it's been a very cheap and easy mission. So taking that into consideration, it's pretty good for what we needed it. So I'm now going to drop off our Kerbal and get us some surface samples. But I have a think, will I actually be able to get back in? Will the jetpack work that well on curb and gravity? And I'm not sure. So I get, is it Bill? It is Bill, I think. I can't really read it from my viewing screen while I'm recording this narration. But I get him in and I play around with trying to tip the ship over. And I'm trying to do it as gently as possible so we don't break off too much of anything. And it takes me a few attempts before I go screw it and I just flip the fin over onto its side. And nope, not this time. We're getting there. So I think it's about now that I just go, oh screw it, let's just topple the fin. And I think all we actually happen to lose is a bit of a battery, which we don't really need too much. So it could be a lot worse. So I roll the fin round until the door is pointing out towards the ground. And I get Bill out. We can plant our flag, finally, guys. And we can also take a surface sample for that little bit more science. So I'm going to walk him over. And doesn't it look really picturesque there with seeing the atmosphere and the sun and... All this, reflecting off all the snow, making it so bright, and the silhouette of us. In fact, you know what, I'm going to make that the um, thumbnail for this video, because I do like that. So we'll plant ourselves a flag. There we go. And we'll also, oh, and you name it, um, what should I call it, Polar Express again? Why not? <laughs> My imaginative brain working there. And we're going to walk a bit away from it and line ourselves up. For a lovely little thumbnail. Oh, beautiful. We should have come here earlier, guys. Whoever it was that suggested this on the last video, good call, mate. That was definitely a good call. So now I believe is time. Did I get the surface sample? I can't even remember. I think I did. So we're going to jump back in the ship. And I'm now actually going to attempt to sort of boost the ship along the ground to a different area. See if we can get different reports and samples to see if that's a fin that can work or not. So I try seeing if I can roll it back up to a stage where I could launch it, but don't have that much torque on the ship, so it doesn't look like that is gonna happen, which is a shame. So I try boosting it along the ground, and luckily I quick safe before in case it goes too wrong, but nothing I seem to do seems to want us to, to move in any great deal. In a minute, I think I go full throttle just to see what happens because we can recover the ship from here without needing the engines working. So it's a lot safer to play a bit dangerously to try and get us a bit deeper into the system. And I'm trying here at around a third throttle, no movement whatsoever, 0.2 meters per second isn't going to get us anywhere. Go up to around 50%, still not really anything. So now I just foot down 100% throttle and we do stop to move. And I try and wiggle the ship around to get it at an angle where we can actually get some leverage. But nothing really seems to happen. So I pretty much just give up now. 
and pretty much decided I think we actually got enough signs just on this one little bit of mission. You can see me still trying, still failing to get our ship to actually take off. But we do have enough signs, I'm pretty sure, to buy that tech to get the ladders, which means next time I'll be looking to see which planet got the most votes from you guys and we'll be heading off there. So I recover the vessel, we get the science, there we see plenty science, 27 I think that said, and we go and we buy ourselves the tech. Hooray guys, one step closer. We now have that mobility enhancer ladder thing, and it means we can go to different planets. So be sure to stay tuned and put in your votes for which planet we want to go see. And we'll be doing that next time. So without further ado, I'll buy the tech. And what does that actually unlock? Oh, that unlocks fins for like rovers and stuff. That could be quite cool. We could look into that. But then again, I am quite excited to try and get the better engines for some further out missions a bit up the page here, the nuclear engines and the bigger three meter engines. Both we need this um, specialized control tech before we unlock them, I think. Or maybe we need the nuke before the advanced flight one. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, we're going to look out to get them. So thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.